Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to solve some quadratic equation using our first technique called factoring. We have two examples here. The first one is a simple example. When you see something like this and you think it's factorable, the first thing you do is realize that this may simply be the product of two binomials. So you write two sets of parentheses like that. Notice that the first term is an x squared. That means you're going to need an x and an x here. Now you look at the signs. The last sign is negative and the middle sign is positive. So it means that one must be positive and one must be negative. So we need a plus and a minus. And then the last two numbers, when you multiply them together, you get minus 15. When you add them together, you get a plus 2. That means that the positive number is bigger than the negative number by a, by a factor of 2. Or I shouldn't say factor 2, but by 2. And uh, so let's see, 5 and 3, that seems to fit the bill. So that would be plus 5 and minus 3 because the positive number must be too bigger than the negative number. And that probably works. A quick check will tell us that 5 times x is 5x, three time, negative 3 times x is minus 3x, that adds up to plus 2x, and when you multiply you get minus 15, so you're good. Now, you have two multiplications. You're multiplying this times this, and you get 0. Whenever you multiply two things together and you get 0, that means either one or the other must be 0, or maybe both, but in this case it's one or the other, which means that either x plus 5 must equal 0 or x minus 3 must equal 0. In this case, x will be equal to minus 5 or in that case, x will be equal to 3 and that is your answer. So those are your two possible answers. Either x is minus 5 or x is 3 and that would be the solution to that quadratic equation. Remember, when you solve an equation, you're looking for the value for the variable that will make the left side equal to the right side. If you plug in negative 5, or you plug in a positive 3, this will equal 0. Our next equation is a little bit more complicated. Notice 28x squared minus x minus 15 equals 0. And yes, if you were to set up two sets of parentheses like that with, a, a set of, with a, uh, some trial and error, you will be able to solve that, but there's a clever technique to do that. What I like to do is separate these two out like this, so write it as 28x squared minus 15 equals 0, and the middle term is now going to be separated into two middle terms. They're going to make that a sum of two middle terms. And those will be with the variable x, and they'll have coefficients in front of those x's. And to find those two coefficients, you can say that the sum must equal negative 1, because when you add them together, you should, be, you should get negative x, so it must be negative 1. And the product will be equal to the product of these two numbers right here. So the product will be 28 times a minus 15, which is equal to a minus 420. So we're looking for two numbers. When I multiply them together, it's minus 420, and when I add them together, I get a minus 1. Which means that there's two numbers that are, only, that are different by one unit, and that the negative number is one bigger than the positive number. And I know that 20 times 20 is 400, so 21 times 20 is probably it. So minus 21 times the positive 20 gives me a minus 420, which means that those are the two numbers that I'm looking for. So I'm going to write this as 28x squared minus 21x plus 20x minus 15 equals 0. So when I add these two terms together, I get back my minus x, so I know I have that correct. Now what I do is I, I look at these two at a time, I look at the first two and say, what is common here? And I see that the 7 and x is common, so I can factor out the 7x, and I'm left with a 4x minus 3. And here I can see that what's common there is 5, so I can factor out a 5 plus 5, and I'm left with a 4x minus 3 equals 0. Now notice that in this term right here and that term right here, we have something that's common, which is 4x minus 3, which I can factor out there. If I factor out a 4x minus 3, I'm left with a... 7x plus 5, and that equals 0. So now I'm in the same boat as I'm over here. I have two things multiplied together to give me 0, which means either one or the other is 0, which means 4x minus 3 equals 0, or 7x plus 5 equals 0, which means that 4x equals 3 when I move the negative 3 ac across, or x is equal to 3 divided by 4 by dividing both sides by 4, or here, I move the 5 across, I get 7x equals minus 5, or x equals minus 5 divided by 7. Again, by dividing both sides by 7, 
And so my answer for the second one is that x equals 3 fourths or x equals minus 5 over 7. You want to check? You simply take these two numbers and plug them back into the original equation to see if the left side equals the right side. And that's how we do that. That's how we solve quadratic equations using factoring techniques.